Hey painters, today I'm going to be reviewing the Scalp 75 Instant Colors Revive Potions Skin Tones. It includes uh, these eight paints right here. We got the Zucchini Skin, uh, Dead Flesh, Fairy Blood, Zombie Skin, Phoenix Feather, Human Flesh, and Undead Dragon. And to round it off, we have the Phoenix Egg. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up and... Uh, Let's get to it. All right, so what I'm going to show here in about a second or two is that the scale 75 paints actually there you go actually are uh, sealed within that nozzle right there so what you're gonna have to do is just take a needle and pop each one of those bottles and then you're gonna be good to go Alright, the first paint I'm going to be using is Zucchini Skin, using my One Page Rules model here. This is their Croxagore, and uh, this is going to be a, a really great model to be using these paints on. Just from all the details and race edges, um, all those nooks and crannies, the paint's going to get really in there and uh, really give a good definition. Let's see what this green uh, Zucchini Skin can do. I'm going to take a break off this camera and then continue painting. So check it out. Alright, so I went ahead and finished painting the back of the Coxcore model using the Zucchini Skin. And from what I can tell, it's going to be a good paint. I'm going to be uh, sticking with this one a little longer, testing it out on some goblins and stuff like that. Okay, using another 3D printed model from Monstrous Encounters this time. I'm going to be using that dead flesh and painting all the, the skin areas, the face areas, those arms and legs. And uh, as you can tell, the, the paint's pretty decent on this one. I kind of like the color tone. It's like a super, uh, it's kind of like a dark uh, color, obviously. And there's a, a tint of purple in there, so it, it looks pretty cool, pretty interesting. It looks almost like actually bruised skin. So um, me as myself, uh, I personally like painting models that are gruesome and ugly like that. So I might be using this as a uh, some kind of glaze or something around wounds and uh, other Nurgle models uh, just to kind of use as like I said bruising and stuff like that it looks like it'll be a cool uh, accent to that Using another 3D printed model, this time from Orc King. This is one of their goblins. I'll be painting the zombie skin. And this one uh, looks really close to a Citadel version. Uh, I think it's like Necrotic Flesh or um, Nurgle, Nurgle's Rot or something like that. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But it's going to be like their, their version of that. And to me, it's not as good. The, the tones there, the colors there, it's just the effect, the effect uh, of contrast. There is no uh, contrast that I see here. Um, to me, the recesses look the same as uh, the higher point. So uh, the color's good. 
and, and tone and stuff but the actual effect of the contrast is not there other than that I mean you can go back in there and highlight as, as you please and you can use, use it for that if you want or maybe even put it in an airbrush it'll probably come out pretty nice in an airbrush Alright, up next in that set is Phoenix Feather. As you can tell, I pretty much picked the perfect model for this, a Barbarian, because to me this looks like dark Barbarian skin. So this is great. Um, I'm kind of glad I picked this model for this uh, skin tone. This model also is by Monstrous Encounters. This is their Hero Crest uh, Barbarian. And as you can see, I'm going to be painting the whole skin area. And by the end of the, the shot here of the painting session, you're going to see that it actually has a pretty cool effect. I think what I would do though is actually just go back and, and um, re-highlight that skin just because um, I kind of like giving that extra contrast and, and those highlights really uh, look really good on the, the table. But overall, it, it's a good skin tone. I like it. Up next, we have the Human Flesh. I'm going to be using this on the Barbarian here from Cast and Play. Um, on this paint, I'm also not a huge fan of. It is also super light, super opaque. The pigment isn't really there to show the contrast. This one is another one I would recommend for glazing over highlights and shadows. Uh, the tone's there. It's a pretty nice tone. It looks more like a, um, like a super light wash or I think actually it's pretty much a glaze so uh, you can see me uh, use this on all over the the skin of course and y'all tell me what y'all think uh, I was using the the wraith bone on this one Next, I'll be using the Undead Dragon. This one also would be one of my least favorite colors. You'll see here in a minute. This one also is very light, very opaque, uh, and the contrast is not there for sure. So I'm gonna be using this Artisan Guild Orc, and I'm gonna paint all over the orc. And uh, you'll see here in a minute when I do the reveal that it's, it's really not a great uh, contrast uh, type of paint. Uh, this one I would also use for another glazing type of uh, painting uh, just to help blend colors. Uh, I do have similar paints from Scale 75 that are similar to this. So I think I'll be using that as, a, like I said, a glaze to kind of blend those highlights and, and shadows. So overall, the, the effect is not there, but the color is pretty cool. I like the color. And the last color is the Phoenix Egg. I'll be using this model from Cast and Play, a uh, tabaxi. So here's a super light opaque color yet again. Um, no big deal. I'll be using this as a glaze. On this model, it was primed using that uh, Wraith Bone. So I mean, it had a good fighting chance as far as the effect of the contrast going for it.
All right, so here's some final shots and, and little uh, tidbits of the paints that are dried now. And I forgot to tell y'all I added that um, fairy skin color, that purple onto the cape and stuff on this one. And that's how it looks dried up. I think the Barbarian had one of the better looking um, colors after all. There goes that zombie skin. That human flesh tone right there. Doesn't look too bad once it's dried. This doesn't look too bad once it's dried either. Probably add another coat or something. Or maybe just give a, another coat into the shadows. So what did y'all think of the paints overall whenever they were done? To me, uh, I'd give it a, a 6 out of 10. Some of the paints were great and they looked pretty cool. And then uh, some of the other ones weren't, about half of them weren't that great. Uh, I think where they really shine is, is the fact that you can actually layer them. And I think that's what they, they're supposed to be used for. Or maybe they're, they're supposed to be used as contrast paints. Um, I haven't really gone on their website to double check or verify anything like that. But to me, they're still going to be used. I'm still going to use them. I'll put them in an airbrush and, and use them to blend my highlights and shades if need be. So they're, they're going to be used. So let me know what y'all would have done differently in this test. Uh, do y'all think I was fair with the with the primers that I used? And what do you think of the Scale 75 Instant Skin Tones? Thank you for watching. Please come back.